So what I'm going to t- today is talk to you about um, where we've come from and where and basically where we think we should be get where we will be going because you know MS research at Menzies is not something new. It was first started in the 1990s and you know that was shortly after I came back to the, the Menzies I uh, came back to the um, uh, Royal Hobart Hospital. We started we started doing MS research at Menzies and. The first um, time that we really became involved in, on a really significant ne- um, level was when we were part of the <coughs> the VicGen program, um, which was a, a genetic study organised by uh, then Dr. Trevor Kilpatrick at the from um, the University of Melbourne, where he was trying to look at the genetic. He was very interested in, in the genetic. Um, contribution of M- uh, to MS risk, and he's, we recruited people for that project. And some of the people in this room, I know, were involved in that project. I don't know whether you remember it, but it was nearly 30 years ago that we first started out. And at that stage, um, this work was um, coordinated by Ingrid van der May, who can't be here today, who was actually a PhD student at that time at the Menzies, working with Anne-Louise Ponsonby, who really became interested in MS research at that point. And this was in the, all in the late um, 1990s. In Then in the um, early 2000s, we were awarded our first NHMRC grant, which was a grant led by um, Terry Dwyer, which is Professor Terry Dwyer, who is a prior, 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 prior um, director of the, the Menzies. And he was very interested in environmental contribution, contributions to disease. And we developed the MS longitud- the Tasmanian MS Longitudinal Study, which again, I recognise that quite a few people were involved with uh, who are in this room and still, and they're still that study is still contributing um, the results of that to significant um, research. And also that around about the same time, again, Professor Anne-Louise Ponsonby developed the Oz Immune Study, which is a study of uh, what was called a case control study, which was established in four sites in Australia because we were very interested in the latitudinal gradient of MS risk. Why are people in Tasmania more likely to get MS than people in Queensland? And we recruited everyone with their first attack with MS in Brisbane, Newcastle, the Western Districts of Victoria, including Geelong and Tasmania. And again, I look around the room and I see people who participated in that study as well. And then we commenced in 2008 the Oslong study, which is the extension of the Osimmune study, and this study is still going today. And Natalia, who's here, um, is one of the coordinators of that study. And we have we've got one of the world's largest and longest MS cohort studies, and it's now being managed and has been managed at Menzies since for the last um, 15, 16 years. Again, a hugely successful study, and it's been one of the drivers of a lot of the the work we've been doing here. So in 2012, we, uh, 2011, we then had our next um, instalment, if you like, of um, people coming back. And that was Kayleen, who's sitting here, who wasn't, wasn't Professor Kayleen Young at the point, she was Dr. Kayleen Young, and how th- times have changed. And Andrew Palmer, who came back as the first professor of um, health economics. And um, they... Uh, but Kayleen came to establish the glial laboratory and was also very interested in stem cell research, which we'll hear a lot more about. And Andrew really established the um, health economics uh, program at the um, Menzies, and a major part of that has been his involvement in MS research. And then um, at the same time, Dr. Jack Charlesworth, who um, has moved on and up in the university, um, was, was establishing a, a research program looking at genetic, rare genetic variants um, as potential drivers of MS risk and progression. That was a very, very controversial topic at that time and caused a lot of consternation in the MS genetics community. But now we've taken that and run with it and people such as Nick Blackburn, who's here today, have made, are really doing a huge amount of work on that. And therefore, we had the five pillars of our research program, which were epidemiology led by Ingrid, um, health economics led by um, Andrew, genetics led by Jack Charlesworth, um, uh, uh, the glial biology led by Kayleen, and the clinical research led by myself. And we had these five pillars had been established, but at this stage, we weren't necessarily... um, working together as a cohesive team. We were all connecting and talking about things, but we really were um, you know, trying to establish, all of us was trying to establish ourselves 
um, in our own way before we then could um, collaborate. But at that time, we did establish multiple connections with around Australia, around the world, and within between each other. And we were very successful in attracting um, uh, postdoctoral research fellows and also PhD students, including Dr. Yuan Zhao, who's here today, who um, was part of the, um, the Menzies program with Anhui Medical School in um, Anhui University in China, who came along as a PhD student. It was very successful and is now taken over as one of the leads of the um, MS flagship. We, um, we realised that we would be a better research group if we all worked together and therefore we um, started to develop uh, our uh, collaborations across the five um, pillars. How can we work together as a coordinated team? And in we unfortunately we applied unsuccessfully um, from this idea of how can we work together by developing a program of research. We applied unsuccessfully to the uh, Centres for Research Excellence program in the NHMRC, which has an about an eight percent success rate. So we weren't surprised we weren't successful. But this all culminated in our successful grant application to the um, Medical Research um, uh, Future Fund, um, which is what established the. MS flagship. This was a, um, a grant in 2019, which allows all of this to happen. And unfortunately, it finishes in um, two days. So we, the aim of the MS research flagship program is to leverage the unique critical mass of MS research in Tasmania, work in partnership with Australian MS researchers, collaborators, MS societies, and most importantly, people with MS address the gaps in the assessment, diagnosis and treatment of MS, and build on our well-developed collaborations and laboratory genetics, epidemiological, health economics and clinical research platforms, and accelerate discoveries in MS uh, research by supporting these key activities. So at um, this point, I'd just like to acknowledge that, you know, with every research program, Things change, people move on, people um, uh, retire, people, um, and we have to really think of one of the major things we have to think about is succession planning. And I'd particularly like to thank uh, Jack Charlesworth, who's gone on to higher and bigger things at the university for her uh, contribution. Also to Andrew Palmer, who's um, in the process of retiring and moving away from MS research. But like, thankfully we've got, um, because of the way we've been working and developing, we've got people who have been able to replace them. Julie Campbell has taken over as lead of health economics. You'll hear more from her later. Also, Yuan, who is here now, is here as well. He's, well, you'll hear more from him, but he's taken over the leading the genetics. And we also have the new generation of people, the people you'll also hear talking, such as Nick Blackburn, Laura Laslett, and Julie again. Um, and I think it's, um, and, there, and I'm, obviously uh, we'll have forgotten some people in that list, but these people are taking over. Their people are moving up. And when, when those of us who are getting too old to keep on going, retire and um, we'll have very, very good replacements for us. So what is our vision? Well, we want, we want to establish, and we have established MS STEM, a stem cell repository specifically designed to advance MS research. And we'll again hear more about that. We will um, gain a better understanding of the regeneration of brain cells and myelin repair. Again, you'll hear um, lots more about that. So it's been an incredibly successful program under Kayleen. We're going to expand our understanding of the rare genetic variants underpinning MS using genomic sequencing of MS families and MS stem cell. And so again, there's an interaction which is developed between MS stem and the genetics. And again, you'll hear more about that through Nick Blackburn shortly. We're going to develop a treatment economic model, and we have developed a treatment economic model, and that's been led by Andrew and also by Julie and other members of the health economic team. And that's now up and live on our website, which you'll also hear a lot more about. We develop educational tools, and this has been a critically important thing to me um, in, uh, over this period of time, is how we actually communicate with people with MS and how we improve the overall understanding of MS amongst the community and that's been a major aim of ours and again I'll be talking about our MS MOOC which has been a critical part of that. So in, and our MS research community has grown. We, we started when we first started developing the MS um, flagship in the 2017 2018. We had 30 people in the MS flagship. We now have over 90 members which is an extraordinary large group is amongst if amongst the largest MS research groups in the world here in Tasmania, certainly the largest in Australia by, by a long way. 
And I'd also like to, you know, you, you've heard a lot of, already heard a lot about our Consumer and Community Reference Committee, which again has grown ex extensively. It started with seven people, it's now 17 people. And it's, it's amongst the, the major um, community and community refer consumer and community reference committees around Australia. People come here and say you're light years ahead of us, and that's because we've we really really worked hard at that. And I'd really like to thank our consumer and community reference committee, and it's in such a critical part of what we do. So, the success. Um, today's presentation will showcase what has been achieved over the last four, point, uh, four to five years under the MRFF Emerging Priorities for Consumer Driven Research, MS Research um, and Flagship Program. You, you can expect to hear about the progress, results and outputs from these five key activities. You will hear how consumers and community involvement positively impacts our MS research at all levels. So this event, um, the contributors to this event, you know, is, we, are absolutely critical. And I would have it in um, the, on slightly different order. We have people living with MS, their carers, family and friends much higher up than the Menzies Institute. And I would like to thank uh, particularly Tracy and, um, you know, uh, Alison, uh, who Ven, who's the prior director, and also the Menzies board, for being incredibly supportive of the MS Research flagship. It's been we you, you can't do it without the um, you know the powers that be, if you like, being completely behind you and supporting you. And I think that's a really critical important to recognise the contribution of the Menzies, the university. And I'd really like to thank some of our major partners, MS Australia and MS Plus. They have been, without doubt, amazing supporters of MS Research in Australia <coughs> and also supporters of us. And I'd really, again, like to emphasise uh, the Consumer and Community Reference Committee. And the event funding, this fund, this event was supported by um, the MS, um, MRFF grant. And again, we'd like to welcome the representatives of the M MRFF to our um, uh, meeting. Okay, now I'd, I'd like to just um, bring up one more thing, which is a, a, an acknowledgement of the lived experience of MS. And we acknowledge and pay respect to people with a lived experience of multiple sclerosis and, their fa and those family members, supporters and carers affected by the diagnosis of a loved one. We recognise the vital importance of health and medical research in MS being informed and led by lived experience um, expertise to ensure an impact, it, it's sure it's, it, it is impactful and relevant to the needs of people living with MS. Thank you. I won't press any more buttons. <laughs>